In thermodynamics, we come across the concepts of energy, entropy, enthalpy, and free energy. We see them in abstract mathematical formulas, but what do they actually mean? And when should we use them? To be fair, we didn't really understand them ourselves until a few weeks ago, even having finished our bachelor courses in statistical physics. Apparently, we are not alone in this. Even Willard Gibbs, known for the Gibbs free energy, once said, any method involving the notion of entropy, the very existence of which depends on the second law of thermodynamics, will doubtless seem to many far-fetched, and may repel beginners as obscure and difficult of comprehension. We often come across these thermodynamic potentials in different fields of physics, so it is very useful to grasp the meaning of the different terms. In this video, we will provide an intuitive explanation rather than a mathematical one. To properly understand the concepts in thermodynamics, it is natural to start with energy. Everyone has some intuition regarding energy and understands that without it, there will quite literally be nothing to experience. But what actually is it? Energy can come in various forms and is often thought of something transferred to an object or system, for instance, by applying heat or work onto it. Thermodynamics is the particular field of physics that looks at this relation between the different forms of energy. This can seem quite overwhelming to study. Thankfully, in the late 19th century, physicists developed several expressions, including the thermodynamic potential, that nicely encapsulates certain relations. To gain insight into these thermodynamic potentials, let's look at a regular day for a particularly inexperienced wizard. Just like any human, the wizard starts his day by eating food. It seems that today he wants to prepare a branch that could probably feed 50 dwarves. The energy he gets from eating is converted into his energy bank and will provide the wizard with the energy needed to practice his spells. After finishing his delightful meal, the wizard looks around and notices the mess he made. Plates, forks, knives, cups, pens. They are all scattered through his kitchen. Luckily, the wizard has studied thermodynamics intensively in the past. He knows that this mess is not his fault. Entropy made his mess if we forget the option to tidy up for a moment. Considering the amount of kitchen equipment that the wizard owns, there can only be one configuration in his kitchen or face space where all the equipment is neatly stored. The wizard being rather messy, which could explain why he has lived alone all these years, fumbled his dishes, dropping them in random places through his kitchen. In fact, given the randomness of the drops, no particular configuration is special, with all of them being equally likely. In his view, since all three configurations are equally likely, it is obvious why his kitchen is always messy. For thermodynamics, entropy measures the disorder of a system. Highly disordered states, or states with a high entropy, are the ones that appear most often in nature. In a process like our wizard making breakfast, the system tends towards a disordered state. Clearly, the wizard knows that he is not accountable for the mess, but it will not become tidy again on its own due to the maximization of entropy. Of course, you can use a magic trick and work against the laws of nature to bring the kitchen back into its initial tidy state, but it rather keeps his energy to practice a new spell he learned. As a regular day for a wizard, he spends his time training and improving his spells, and today he wants to summon a cute little bunny, a spell he learned in the most recent edition of the Magician's Gazette. Using his wand, he converts the energy gained from his breakfast into the internal energy of the rabbit. Internal energy is the energy contained within a thermodynamic system, that is, the energy necessary to create a system in any state, in this case, a rabbit. Nevertheless, even if the spell was formulated correctly, nothing happens. Our wizard, being quite the physicist, remembers his old studies in quantum mechanics. Creating a rabbit is already difficult, but if you try to do that in a system that contains matter, like the air he breathes, it's impossible, due to the properties of fermionic particles, but that's another story. So, our wizard tries again, but this time he first spends some energy to do some mechanical work. In other words, he pushes away all the air to fit his rabbit within the environment. Now that he created a vacuum, he can finally summon the bunny. The enthalpy of a system is the sum of the internal energy and the mechanical energy, which is the product of the pressure and the volume. In our case, the internal energy of the system is the rabbit, 
and the mechanical energy is the work we had to do to push the air fluid away in order to create the rabbit. However, not being the most experienced wizard, he forgot to consider an important aspect when conjuring up his rabbit friend. He realizes this as he starts to feel a mystic aura around him, as if he was suddenly more energetic. Being a good wizard, he tries to understand why. After thinking for a bit, he recalls something from his thermodynamic studies. The odd feeling he is experiencing is the excess energy he applied within his spell being restored into his energy bank for future use. The wizard had forgotten to take into account the heat provided by the environment when forming the rabbit. The enthalpy, plus this correction from the energy supplied thanks to the surroundings, is called the Gibbs free energy. With the energy of the surroundings helping me conjure up his rabbit friend and the correction being restored, the wizard now has just enough energy to try out one last spell. But for now, he will enjoy the moment just a little longer, as he successfully cast his spell. In all his excitement of conjuring up his friend, the wizard forgot to keep in mind the mess a rabbit makes with its jumping and its eating. He likes the idea of keeping the rabbit, but he already has a messy kitchen and doesn't want to clean up more than needed. After all, why not try and postpone the heat death of the universe? The perfect solution would be to keep a statue of the rabbit where its volume is conserved, while still removing all its thermal motions. In other words, the atoms of the rabbit consist of remain classically frozen in place, and what better way in doing so by turning it into a delicious chocolate rabbit? This is the notion of the Helmholtz free energy, when the thermal energy within a system, in our case the rabbit, is corrected for but not the volume it occupies. That means no mechanical work. Clearly, the wizard still has a lot to learn when it comes to practicing his spells. However, we hope that after having looked at a day in his life, you have gained some intuition about the thermodynamic potentials. Sometimes one potential will be more useful to know than another, simplifying our lives as physicists. After all, aren't physicists often trying to simplify everything?